Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I am Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. Hey, for those of you who've been watching the channel for a long time now, you know way back in July of last year, we did a video along with Aaron over at Three Aces, Fine Gun Store in Spokane, that talked about the new point system that the ATF was coming up with so that they could take all of your AR pistols and reclassify them as short-barreled rifles. Now, that kind of Went by the wayside for a while, it kind of grew went stale, but just last month we got some information that clearly shows us what the ATF's intentions are, and it goes a lot more beyond just AR pistols. So, today we're going to have to talk about when is the ATF coming after your AR pistol or lower receiver. Okay, before we get rolling, you guys know the drill. If you like this video, click that like button down below. If you want to stay up to date on issues related to your Second Amendment rights, go ahead and click the subscribe button down below. Click the little bell logo if you want to be notified when we post new videos. And most importantly, let's keep the comments and discussions coming. That's how we're going to make sure that we get our videos out to more lawful and responsible gun owners like yourself. Okay, so for those of you who have been geeking out with us since last summer when we kind of started this channel... You remember that one of the earlier videos we did was with uh, our good friend Aaron over at Three Aces, and we talked about this proposed point system that the ATF was coming up with. And really what it was is it was a way for the ATF to take millions and millions of AR pistols, transform them overnight through and shift an interpretation into SBR, short-barreled rifles, which, of course, now they all must be registered under the National Firearms Act. We all must pay a $200 tax stamp. And if we don't do that, we all become felons. Now, there was huge uproar when this was first kicked around last summer. And then it kind of, things kind of died down for a while. And then, of course, the ATF had its own trials and tribulations with the David Chipman experience. But just late last month, the Federal Registry was published. What's the Federal Register? Well, the Federal Register is where all the codes of federal regulations are kept. And yep, yep, it's a big one. It's uh, 698 pages this time around. And uh, you guys don't have the time to read it, but hey, I guess I do. So we're going to talk about some things that are in the Federal Register because I think what it does here is the ATF is really tipping their hands about two things. Number one, they clearly give us some direction on where they're going to go with this point system and when they intend on implementing it. And number two, I think they're going to have a huge enforcement effort against 80% lowers. Now, for those of you who've been watching the channel recently, you know we've been spending a lot of time talking about all the crazy ideas that are kicking around in Olympia this year, including House Bill 1705. Now, House Bill 1705 would outlaw 80% lowers here in the state of Washington. And in order to effectuate that law, there are considerable changes that are being amended to RCW 9.41.010, which for those of you who've been watching the channel know that that's the definitional section of our Firearms Act. And that really kind of tells us what the application of the law is to certain activities or certain types of firearms. It is very clear from what is found in the Federal Register and what the ATF has published that they are going to take a big enforcement action against 80% lowers and untraceable firearms, very similar to House Bill 1705, and that's going to be effective June of this year. The four-point system. The four-point system for our AR pistols, that is the way that the ATF is going to now try to reclassify all of our AR pistols into short barrel rifles, is going to start in August of this year. How do I know that? Well, because the ATF themselves told us that. Just to give you an idea of the information that I'm relying on, let me read to you the ATF's summary, which was published in the Federal Register. The Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives, ATF, issues regulations to enforce the federal laws relating to the manufacture, importation, sale, and other commerce in firearms and explosives. ATF's missions and regulations are designed to, amongst other objectives, 1. Curb illegal traffic in and criminal use of firearms and explosives, and 2. Assist state, local, and other federal law enforcement agencies in reducing violent crime. The ATF will continue as a priority during fiscal year 2021 to seek modifications to its regulations governing commerce in firearms and explosives in furtherance of these important goals. 
ATF plans to finalize regulations regarding the definition of firearm, firearm frame or receiver, gunsmith, complete weapon, complete muffler, muffler or silencer device, privately made firearm and readily and finalized regulations on marking and record keeping that are necessary to implement these brand new or amended definitions. The intent of this rulemaking is to consider technological developments and modern terminology in the firearms industry and to enhance public safety by helping stem the proliferation of unmarked privately made firearms that have increasingly been recovered at crime scenes. Further, the ATF plans to finalize regulations to implement certain provisions of public law Omnibus Consolidated and Emergency Supplemental Appropriations Act and to set forth factors when evaluating firearms with an attached stabilizing brace to determine whether they are considered firearms under the National Firearms Act and or Gun Control Act. The second rule would make clear that all weapons that fall under the National Firearms Act, however they are made, are subject to its heightened regulations including registration and background check requirements. ATF has also begun a rulemaking process that amends 27 CFR Part 447 to update terminology in the ATF's import control regulations based on similar terminology amendments made by the Department of State on the U.S. munitions list in the International Traffic in Arms and Regulations and the Department of Commerce on the Commerce Control List in the Export Administration Regulations. And that certainly is a mouthful. But what you can see here is they are going to greatly expand the definition of what is a frame or a receiver, what constitutes a frame or a receiver, and what constitutes a short barrel rifle. They are taking a definition and expanding it so that more activity and more firearms and firearm components fall within the confines of the ATF's restrictions. Now, the reason that many people actually cry for the abolition of the ATF is not so much for what they stand for, but how they go about their business. In normal representative government, if we want to change our firearm laws, what we would do is the state legislature would actually, or federal legislature would actually pass statutes, which would then redefine terms or redefine activity, which is either prohibited or deemed legal. That is how representative government works. And as critical as we want to be of what the state of Washington is doing this legislative session, candidly, they are doing it through representative government. The problem with the ATF is, is that whenever the political winds change, we just change the enforcement level of the ATF by allowing them to interpret laws differently. Take, for example, a couple of the recent uh, controversies that we've had with solvent traps, which are now deemed suppressors, parts of solvent traps that are deemed suppressors, or take a look at the problems we've had with the binary, uh, wide open trigger, or force reset trigger from rare breed. It's almost as if like the ATF, which does apparently regulate alcohol as well, could walk into a grocery store, take a look at a display of chocolate milk, and decide that now is alcohol and needs to be federally regulated. Why? Because their interpretation of alcohol now includes some type of chocolatey goodness. Now, when it comes to frames and receivers, this is what the ATF is telling us. The Department of Justice proposes amending Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearm, and Explosives regulations to provide a new regulatory definition of firearm frame or receiver and frame or receiver because they are outdated. The department also proposes amending ATF's definitions of firearm and gunsmith to clarify the meaning of those terms and to add new regulatory terms such as complete weapon, complete muffler or silencer device, privately made firearm, and readily for purposes of clarity given advancements in firearm technology. Further, the department proposes amendments to ATS regulations on marking and record keeping that are necessary to implement these new or amended definitions. And then the ATF statement in need on this states, 
This rule is intended to clarify the definition of firearm and to provide a more comprehensive definition of frame or receiver so that those definitions more accurately reflect firearm configurations not explicitly captured under the existing definitions in 27 CFR. Further, this N. PRM proposes terms and definitions to take into account technological developments and modern terminology in the firearms industry, as well as amendments to the making and record keeping requirements that would be necessary to implement these definitions. And then lastly, what I want you to be aware of, and this is really important here on the frames and receivers, is when we take a look at the action dates right here that are listed, you'll see that the rule was proposed in May 21 of 21. And the public comments ended on 819 of 21. But when is the final action? That is, when is this supposed to take effect? Well, June of 22. So this whole thing is coming to a head here in the next few months. And between this and what's going on with House Bill 1705, those of you who have untraceable firearms, those of you who had built firearms from 80% lowers, those of you who are currently possessing 80% lowers, you need to carefully, carefully watch this uh, development. Now, when it comes to the issue related to pistol braces and basically trying to take all of our AR pistols, which are completely lawful, and now turn them into unlawful short-barreled rifles, the ATF statements state as follows. The Department of Justice is planning to propose a to amend the regulations of the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms and Explosives to set forth factors considered when evaluating firearms with an attached stabilizing brace to determine whether they are considered firearms under the National Firearms Act and or Gun Control Act. What is the need for this? Well, the ATF states that their need is, this rule is intended to clarify when a rifle is intended to be fired from the shoulder and to set forth factors that the ATF considers when evaluating firearms with an attached purported stabilizing brace to determine whether these rules under the GCA or NFA and therefore whether the firearms are subject to the NFA. It amends the definition of rifle in 27 CFR respectively by adding a sentence at the end of each definition. The new sentence would clarify that the term rifle includes any weapon with a rifled barrel and equipped with an attached stabilizing brace that has objective design features and characteristics that indicate that the firearm is designed to be fired from the shoulder as indicated on ATF Worksheet 4999. And then most importantly, because we've been talking about this, everybody has been talking about this. What is the effective date? When we take a look at the ATF's own statements right here, we see that the proposal was made on June 10th of 2021 and public comments ended on September 8th of 2021. When is the final action scheduled for? It's scheduled for August of this year. So, to answer the question proposed at the beginning, when is the ATF coming after your 80% lowers or untraceable firearms? It appears June of this year. When are they coming after your AR pistols? Well, it appears just a couple months later in August of this year. We will keep you posted about this. There will be a lot more developments as we learn more. Listen, you may have more questions about this or anything else related to your Second Amendment rights. And if you do, don't ever hesitate to contact us at WashingtonGunLaw.com. Or, of course, you can call us directly at 425-765-0487. Now, let's all remember, part of being the lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time here at Washington Gun Laws, to know what the law is in every situation and how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching. Stay safe.